Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. So we're back on the Apocalypse Truck Project. Um, we're going to ink the transfer case out today and tear it apart. Um, we don't know anything about it. There's some little plastic uh, bushings that go on the shift fork that we're worried may be bad. So we're just going to take it apart, go through it, make sure it's all good. We did find, as you saw in the last video, we believe it to be a, a fairly new rebuilt transmission. So that's about where we're at. We've checked the rear end. The rear end has a new posi, um, limited slip, whatever you may want to call it, in it. We've put new oil in that. We've made sure the transmission's full. We've done a little patchwork on the frame for now, and we've ordered the steel for the uh, flatbed. So we're getting there. We have the exhaust cut off. Um, we'll be working on that. I think there's a problem with the header on this side. We're probably just going to pull all that off when we get the nose of the truck off and check into it. But we're going to go ahead and uh, shut up and fast forward through some of this and show you what it takes to get the, drive, uh, the transfer case out of this truck.
All right, so as you saw, even though that was fast forwarded, that was about 24 minutes total to get that out. And that was with me kind of uh, screwing around with the front dry shaft. One of the bolts doesn't want to turn in the uh, yoke. So I had to move, you know, spin the uh, clamp out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to rejigger here, let the truck down, get a piece of plywood, and we'll bring you back and we'll tear this thing apart and uh, we'll see what it looks like inside. Interestingly enough, the bottom drain plug looks like it's got a brand new gasket on it. So maybe somebody's already been through this. Uh, I just want to make sure. So hold on and we'll be right back. All right, so we've got it up here on a piece of plywood on the back of the truck. We're going to go ahead and start dismantling it and uh, see what it looks like inside. Grab a rubber mill. Be right back. Sue's coming to check on us to see how much of a mess we're making of the apocalypse truck. But that's. Can you check on if you want to eat some supper. Supper sounds really good. Okay. You guys might have to take a break here and wait for me to go eat. But uh, yeah. I'm going to go cook you some burgers. All right, so what you got here, this is your speedometer drive. Hopefully you guys are seeing that okay. Let me make sure you're seeing that okay. Oh yeah. So this is your speedometer drive here on the side of the case. That turns the speedometer cable. This gear here actually turns that drive. So we're going to set that over there. This is your pump. So this piece here sets over this piece. And that pumps your oil through the transfer case. It's a pretty crude pump, but that's what it is, and it works just fine. So now we're going to take the back half of the case off and see what things look like in there. So far, they look pretty clean, but there's um, there's a set of plastic, uh, not plastic forks. There's a set of forks that have plastic bushings on them to do the shifting. And those plastic pieces get brittle and break over time. And that's what I'm worried about with this one. Always one bolt. set some stuff out of our way. Set that down. Get a little bit more speedy dry to put under us here. I think we've managed to dump about two gallons of ATF and a gallon and a half of gear oil on the floor here. That's okay. Just want to double check, make sure you get all your bolts. But it is starting to move, and uh, there is a screwdriver slot right here, so we're going to get a big screwdriver. Typically, if anybody has these apart, they end up putting silicone in here. This is not a lot. There's no factory gasket for that, I guess is the way to say it. And you got to be real careful how much silicone you put in, because you don't want it all through the transfer. 
There we go. So now that was on there like that. We'll take that out. Now look at our magnet. See what I mean about that silicone inside the transfer case? The magnet actually doesn't have that much metal on it. That's pretty good for uh, something of this vintage. I have a feeling somebody's been in here and rebuilt it. So, I'm going to see if I can show you what I'm talking about. You see that blue right there? That's a, one of the bushings on the shift fork. There'd be another one down in there. And another one up in here, which I'm not seeing. And then way down in there, there's another shift fork for high and low range. So this is your four-wheel drive right here. And then that one down there is high and low range. It's a set of planetaries in there. That bring you into a, uh, a lower range so we're going to keep going um, just because we really want to see what those shift forks look like so we're going to keep digging into this i think if i it's been a while since i told one of these apart i'm pretty sure i've got to dig into some stuff here hmm. see that's this is your front dry shaft and this is your rear dry shaft. So that fork is not, it's not all the way in four wheel drive. This would be, that would be two wheel drive. That would be four wheel drive. You see it's not locking in. So it just caught right there. And that's what we were noticing when we were up driving it. So something's not going quite right in there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the time and we're going to tear this apart. Some things a fella can do without, but snap ring pliers is not one of those. And you'll notice I'm stacking things up the way they come out. It doesn't seem right. I don't know if you can see that. That shouldn't be like that. So we're going to have to tear into that in a little bit. But these are the forks I was talking about right here. You see those plastic pieces look pretty good. So, we'll have to keep tearing into it. See what we see, what we find. And go from there. We're definitely going to have to check this out and figure out why that front output shaft is so loose. And we can pull, we can continue to pull those pieces out I'm going to have to get some gloves and some rags. But you can see the, the plastic on those ones. It actually looks pretty soft. I'm thinking probably this isn't that old. I don't understand that though. So there's your next shift fork. You see those bushings look good. This is not an original transfer case, I can promise you that. There's no way those bushings will look like that. And this is your planetary. This is what gives you low range. So you'll see how it's got these in here. When I turn the center of it, those gears there, mesh into this gear here, 
and give us low range instead of high range. So this is our this is our input shaft out of the transfer case. I mean, out of the transmission. Then you'll see that goes in there like that. And you see how right now it's turning one to one or one one to two, two to one, whatever the ratio is. And then when you put it in high range, this pulls out and locks like that. And every tur everything turns as one. So that's your high and low range adjustment there. That goes in there just like that. There's another bushing right there. But yeah, we're pretty excited about that. So other than this, And I've got to look into that. That may actually be normal. They may rely on the spacing back here to set that backlash. That may actually be normal. So all the bearings look good. Everything turns good. The only leak we saw was in the tail shaft output seal. And if you watch this through the Dodge, you'll know that uh, a lot of times they leak between the steel of the seal and the aluminum of the case. If you put a little bit of silicone on that when you drive it in, usually you're in pretty good shape. So I think we're going to stop there. We're going to probably go have some burgers and we'll come back and start cleaning this up and put it back together. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.